I wanted to do a lot of work on Boba Fett's ship. I like the shape of it. Welcome to Star Wars 100 Interviews. Take a look around the channel for about 113 different Star Wars cast and crew interviews. Today, I go back in the archives to my very first Star Wars interview. It's with an ILM legend, Lorne Peterson. And stay till the end, as just last week, Lorne cleared up with me his two cameo appearances. There's a little misrepresentation out there. Lorne has been with ILM since the very start. Well, uh... At first, I didn't quite understand how huge this project was. I don't think anybody did, you know, in 1975 when I started. It wasn't Star Wars with capital S and W, you know, small case. Uh, and it would really felt like getting back with a bunch of college mates, you know. We were like in a university art department, that kind of thing. We've got the most prestigious book I've ever seen in my life coming out. In fact, it's already out. It's, we'll talk about that in a second, but I just want to ask you, before we get into the pages of it, um, some of the early models. Man, you've created some of the best models in Star Wars because we yeah. all love the originals. Tell us about your favorites. Well, uh, emotionally, there's a difference between emotionally my favorite and maybe physically my favorite. Uh, it's hard to beat the big white store destroyer going overhead, you know, yeah. it, the impact that that had. Uh, say, uh, on, the, on the other side, I wanted to do a lot of work on Boba Fett's ship. I liked the shape of it, and at that time I was starting to have more and more employees, and I was hitting the tops of the waves, and I wanted to do one picker model really in depth, and so I kind of stopped what I was doing and, and really worked more on Boba Fett. So I've always felt very proud of the way it looked. Tell us about the genesis of that uh, actual ship. Is it uh, modeled after an iron or a street lamp, I think I've read? It, yeah, Boba Fett's uh, ship is definitely a street lamp. And in Marin County, where we work, uh, behind our shop, you can actually look up, you know, uh, 40 feet, 35 feet, and still see those a few of those lamps. That, oh. uh, uh, And I'm not sure in Australia, I'm sure they have a different style of lamps yeah. and everything like that. But. It's a wonder they haven't been plucked off by the fans. They want everything, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, find one of them shinning up the pole to get the... <laughs> you know, that's one thing that should be kept. One, uh, There should be in the archives, there should be one of those lamps. That's great reference stuff, isn't it? Yeah. I will, I'll try to remember that when I go back. There must be a city yard with wrecked ones, you know. Cars ran into them and they took them down and that kind of thing. Uh, glad I could help you out there by thinking about that. That's right. <laughs> we'll give you credit. We'll get a little plaque. I love that so much. Now, speaking of love, I'm in love with your book. Tell us oh, how this came you. about. We, we thought of doing a book on the model shop maybe 10 years ago, but I think Lucasfilm was right in waiting, you know, till all six films were done. True. But they, about um, be two years ago this Christmas, they asked me to, first they gave me two years to do the book, and I thought, well, that's okay. That's good. Well, as soon as I agreed to do it, they changed it to one year. Uh. Yeah. And then it became a little bit less than one year. The pressure's on. Yes. The pressure was on. And I'm not a born and bred writer either, you know, so. I just love all the reference pictures in here, especially like full page, glossy, photos we've never seen before. Tell yeah. us about those. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, we really searched through the archives to try and find uh, pictures that weren't published before. And in the big book, which is five inches thick, there were about 750 s slides that I took myself on the first Star Wars. Oh, right. Uh, we didn't have a still photographer on the set on uh, in the, when you did the models when you did the shooting, so I took it upon myself. And fortunately, we were able to use those in the big book later on as kind of the the culture of ILM, how all of those 19 and 20, 31 year old people worked together mm -hmm. for a year and a half to get the film done. Do they still make models in the newer films? Oh, for sure they do. Uh, there was more models actually made money wise than the whole first film. But on the first film, we only had seven model makers and maybe 70 to 100 employees. Whereas by the time we did Sith, we were up to 80 to 90 model makers, just model makers. And then there were about 1,200 employees. Uh, and about 600 of those were CGI modelers and, and artists and animators, things that kind of thing. So we still make models. We just are a smaller percentage of the whole of the company. Do you think the uh, actual physical model making will be around forever? You know, I don't know. I'm not going to be around forever. I, I don't <laughs> wish you would be. <laughs> I don't imagine. I think it'll really be a part. CGI is like the new, uh, the big gorilla in the room these days, you know. 
and uh, it doesn't necessarily steal our thunder, but it, it, it really adds to what happens with the models. You know, they, they look better in the composites that CG can do than they did back when we did photochemicals. Here's Lorne Peterson's cameo appearances. Some folk claim that he was also a temple guard at the end of episode four, but Lorne told me last week otherwise. He played the rebel up in the Crow's Nest watchtower, and he had a small walk-around role in The Phantom Menace. The net has this pic of him from episode one. So the two cameos were confirmed by Lorne himself. Check out his awesome book if you get a chance. And Lorne is an absolute gentleman, genius, and giant of sci-fi. Catch you soon.